Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek & Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. If you recall, in the first tutorial for making this ring, I was extremely careless with laying out these UVs, these polygons on our UV map right here. These ones right here. Uh, because I said they didn't matter. And here is the reason why. If you recall a, the picture that I originally shown, this whole model um, has a procedural color to it, a gold material applied to it. The only thing that we need to affect is the, 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 the center here where the letters are in the middle of the ring and the same thing here on the outside of the ring. The whole object is going to be covered with a procedural material when we finish this and bring it into view. What we need to do now is to create a distribution map so that we can apply a separate texture onto the ring so that we can make these letters. So back here in Cinema 4D, these polygons that I have selected and the corresponding UVs on our UV map, they don't matter. Only these that I had laid out and created a texture map from, or a UV map, that we're going to use in Photoshop. So with our UV map, what I need to do is use a font that I can mimic or duplicate the font so that I can duplicate the font that's on the original ring. Well, I did a Google search for Lord of the Rings fonts and there were several sites that appeared. One of them was dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T, and it came up with several Lord of the Rings style font. So I'm going to use this one and I'm going to make my foreground color black. If I click in here and then start typing, you see I can make some Lord of the Rings style text. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'm just going to be typing away and I'll be right back. Okay, I've done enough typing. I've got my font, a whole bunch of characters. All I'm going to do is just, let me see, let's start with lining it up here in the center. And I'll line it up flush against this edge. Let's scroll over. And I'll drag it over and I'll leave just a little space there to approximate the same uh, width of space in between these words. That way, when it wraps over, um, it'll it'll just it'll just continue repeating itself. And I didn't spend a whole lot of time straightening out these UV maps. As long as I keep my font on this center line, that will be okay. All right, I'm just going to duplicate this and drag it up here. And I guess I'll just line it up here. Oops. And well, I'll delete some of these characters here. Leave a little bit of space there. I guess I deleted too many. I'll just stretch it. I don't think it'll be visible. Okay. It needs to be in the center, so what I will do is I will rotate this. Now I rotate it 
rotated it a little bit too much. Whoopsie. All right, that one's in the center there. Let's see. Okay, this needs to come down a little bit or up. Okay, pretty good. Um, what I need to do is now create a background, and I'll fill this in with the color of white. And this is our displacement map. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it uh, as the original. As the give it the same name as the UV map, which will be fine. And now we're going to bring all of this into view, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've imported my ring into view. All I need to do now is just select some textures for it. So I'll pop into the material editor, and let's find a, a metal texture. And I will go with the gold here. Now I'm going to create a mixed material because I um, the ring has the gold on the whole thing and also that yellow lettering. So I'm just going to uh, copy this material and just paste it back into here. The only difference is on this one I'm going to lose the reflection. I don't need that. And I'm going to change this to a glowing material. Click OK to that. Now what I need to do, since I have two materials on this object, I need to tell you how I want those materials distributed across the face uh, or overall um, how I want them distributed on my object. So click on the distribution and choose edit function. I need to create a texture map. So click in here to create a empty node. Come over here. Choose the, the texture map node. And I'm just going to link these up. Grayscale output. Come down here. And now I'm just going to navigate my way over to my desktop and find that distribution map I made. There it is and I'm going to change this to object parametric object parametric object parametric and let's see what this looks like let's do a fast render now in this direct lighting you don't notice anything so I think we can probably choose a atmosphere setting that will give us the uh, desired effect that we want. Um, let me pause it here and I'll just choose a black atmosphere. Okay, here's a black background. That will work just fine. Probably drag the sun down a little bit and away and now we'll do a render of this. Well, in this complete black background, you don't see a whole lot. But what you do see is a perfect distribution of the materials. And this is exactly how they did it when they created this for the movie. <coughs> Create a simple object with a, dist with a distribution map. This line across here is my horizon behind me because of the reflection. You see that line there. Let me change the angle of the camera a little bit. That's a little better. I'm going to do a final render and I'll be right back. And as this is finishing up, you see, this is our uh, Lord of the Rings ring. Now, I think probably we could increase the brightness of this glowing material a little bit. Uh, let's bring up the intensity and the brightness a little bit. As 
So this is how they created that really cool little ring and that many people have duplicated over the years since the movie has come out. And the really the purpose of this whole tutorial is to show how you can distribute materials on an object and really how you have a great deal of power and flexibility in how you distribute or arrange your UV maps. All of the polygons that weren't in this center strip in the front and in the inside of the ring, I, I just you know, shrunk down to virtual nothing because they didn't matter in, in how this object was, was going to receive this procedural material. And I have read various emails to myself and seen things on forums that for beginners UV mapping is kind of a um, uh, people people are kind of scared of it because they don't understand it it's it's very easy once you get the grasp of it and you have a lot of control and a lot of flexibility in how you choose to apply a material to an object so that's it for these Cinema 4D tutorials. Thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.